A customer sent us a QNAP model number TVS472XT and they were trying to replace the processor. It seems they may have damaged some of the pins on the socket and right now when I power it up, it stays stuck on this infinite no boot issue. So let's open it up and take a closer look at that socket. And it does look like we have a lot of extra thermal paste here. Okay, and at first glance, it looks okay. There's maybe one spot right over here we can, we can see looks weird. Let's maybe look at this under the microscope. So far, everything looks pretty good. Not seeing anything bad. Okay. I am noticing right here, this one is a little off. So that could be an issue. It's also fairly loose. Yeah, this one's definitely bent. So I don't think it's gonna be making proper contact with the chip. So that's gonna be an issue right there. Over here, there is a missing pin. The pin is just not even there. There's nothing. So that is a problem. This one and this one are bent down lower than they should be, which means they're probably not making contact with the chip. It looks like there's another missing pin. So what that means is that for sure two pins are missing and we have, I believe, three or four other pins that are bent down. So they're not gonna be high enough to make contact with the back of the chip. So these exposed pads on the back of the processor are just not gonna make contact with, uh, with those pins. So to remove the socket and replace it with a new one, we are gonna have to use our rework machine, which means I'm gonna have to prep this board and remove anything that might hinder our ability to replace that socket. So for example, the metal clamp will need to be removed. Some of the more sensitive parts, such as the battery, the NAN daughter board, our RAM over here will need to be removed and we'll probably also cover up some of the plastic with some Kapton tape uh, just to protect them from the heat. Okay, our board is now prepped and ready to be reworked. But first, before we continue, if you found the video helpful or useful so far, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe for more content. Taking a closer look, it doesn't look like we have any damage where the socket was originally, nor where it landed, but we'll do a, a quick double check under the microscope to make sure nothing got knocked off. Is 
close that we're going to get. So we did have a little bit more of a hard time with attaching this portion. The solder just wasn't melting, so we went with some uh, hot air assist, and we did melt a little bit of the plastic, but that should be okay. I don't think it'll affect the, the way that the chip sits in the socket. I'm gonna put the lid back on the socket to protect it while we put everything back together. Put the processor in. There we go. All right, perfect fit. We don't have everything back together yet, but let's power it up and see if it turns on at least. And it does look like we have our lights over here powering on. And it's green. Well, so far the unit is booting up. So to me, that means we do have a successful CPU socket replacement. But let's wait a few minutes to make sure that it actually fixed our problem. So at this moment, the unit tried to boot. It, we waited for about five to 10 minutes. It still wouldn't boot. So I took the CPU out. I'm doing a quick check. This is our new socket. I mean, so it should be perfect. And looking at all the pins, they do look good. Uh, I did make sure that the socket seated correctly, and it did. Um, everything looks good. I even swapped the processor out with a known good one that we own, tried it again, and we're still stuck on that uh, system booting, but it never actually boots all the way in. So we've at least ruled out the socket. We know that's not the issue, but we're gonna have to conclude this video as a no fix for right now until we get a little more time to figure out what's going on. Um, but at this point, we've done the socket replacement, which was the point of the video, and we're just gonna have to keep diagnosing further to identify what is actually wrong and causing this problem with the unit. If you have a QNAP unit you would like for us to fix, we'll have links to our repair services in the description down below. Otherwise, if you found the video helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.